It is Thursday, June 8th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. And now, a guy who's down to his last disengagement, J.P. Shatrick. And welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. It is Thursday. It is the end of the OTAs. I'm J.P. Shadrick. We've got a busy hour ahead. Jeff Lagerman coming up shortly. The Stadium of the Future plans unveiled yesterday. We'll preview the community huddles in the coming weeks. Mark Lamping, Peter Broder from HOK. We had a conversation with those two yesterday. It's available now on jaguars.com. We'll replay some of that conversation uh, coming up in just a little bit. Jaguars assistant coaches speaking with the media yesterday ahead of the uh, end of OTAs and the mandatory mini camp next week and then the dead period ahead. So a lot to get to. On this Thursday, Jeff Lagerman, good afternoon. Good to be back with you. It's been a couple of weeks. We were off last week. Yeah. We're back, baby. No, it's, it's, uh, it's good to be back, and it'll be interesting to see if we have a mini camp to attend next week. You know, that's the feel, right? Um, you know, the vets didn't do much of anything last year, um, and, you know, they went and played paintball today. Yeah, they yeah, had a little paintball trip today, which is cool. Um, I remember uh, when I was in New York, Pete Carroll was kind of the first one that I remember in the National Football League that started to do things like this. And uh, I remember one night, uh, one afternoon, we went bowling. We had a – Are you um, any good at bowling? Uh, n- no, not really. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I think I, if I can get 160, I'll be pretty happy. You know, if, uh, but I'm I'm over 100 consistently, but I'm not great. We should go bowling. We sometime. should. You know, that's a great idea. Just give me a little time to heal up, and I'll be ready. But I yeah. but I like bowling. But uh, after we did, a couple of cold ones, I'm a little better. Actually, yeah. But we used yeah. to do a lot of fun things, and coaches like to do that to just create a little bit of a distraction, but also create the the teamwork atmosphere away from the building, and to build the camaraderie. And Pete used to do it with we went bowling one time. Uh, another time we had a home run derby, so you had a guy pitching to you, you know, for your own position group. So every position group got to pitch uh, to pick one guy, uh-huh. and then one guy from that position group threw him pitches, and it could have been underhand, overhand, didn't matter. And they counted home runs with a limited number of pitches. Had a uh, three point contest, you know, because Pete was a big basketball player. But I mean, those things build camaraderie, and I, it's cool that Doug is doing something like this to, to build the camaraderie, not just between the players, but also the coaching staff and the uh, the football staff and the players. Yeah, absolutely it is. And, you know, it also tells you that Doug Peterson is probably happy with the work they got in this offseason. If they're canceling the 10th and final OTA to go play paintball, that means they got some work done. Well, they got they've had some really good work. You know, I've been fortunate enough to watch quite a few practices and the team's been working hard. The Miami Dolphins just announced last week that they would not be having a mandatory minicamp. So could the Jaguars and Doug Peterson follow suit with some of that? You know, because kind of when players around the league see that one team's canceled a minicamp, then other team's veterans feel like, hey, ours should be canceled too. Let's do that. <laughs> but uh, but I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, either way, I, I got a feeling that the rookies aren't going anywhere. You know, the rookies are going to get work in, and, and the veterans may, and they may not. Maybe they only work for – part of the minicamp maybe they don't work at all maybe they work all of it i don't know maybe they pick and choose some guys to stick around right hey right but they look i mean when you have the amount of uh of practices you know i don't want to say it becomes repetitive because i mean the more that you work at your craft the better that you can get but sometimes it can get a little bit stale and the coaches are looking to provide uh as much of a mental break as they possibly can because when you come back it's a grind it's an absolute grind for a regular season A little bit later, we'll hear from some assistant coaches. They were made available to the media earlier this week, actually yesterday afternoon, on what was a busy day around TIAA Bank Field with the unveiling of the Stadium of the Future. The Jaguars have been working for almost three years to assess the current stadium, and now working with HOK, they've produced designs for the Stadium of the Future. They were presented yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning And they are spectacular. The fly-through, if you're watching on Jaguars.com, from the promenade outside all the way through an expanded concourse area and into a stadium bowl that 
has so many new amenities, a roof over the top, still at open air end. Uh, there's a lot of uh, innovation in this design, and it's been a long road to get to this point, but the time is now to at least make it public, and then the next couple of weeks there'll be community huddles to have the uh, community's input on it as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, – it's got to be obviously a partnership between the city and, and the team, and, and there's a, a, a ways to go. But, uh, I mean, look, uh, the National Football League, it, you got to have – your stadium up to date and to be able to have teams be competitive and the rendering looks fantastic. I love the, the idea of how they kind of have that first kind of main level elevated to where you can see a little bit of a distance to the city, et cetera, to the river. And uh, I like the idea of providing shade. I don't know exactly you know, what that material is going to be. You don't want to lose the breeze, but uh, they're saying that it could cool inside of the stadium 15 degrees or more, which, I mean, that's hugely beneficial to the fans because it can get pretty warm, as everybody knows. But, but the other thing, too, that I think is critically important, and, and Mark Lamping talked about this, is that the field needs to stay natural grass. You know, there's been a, a lot of conversation over the last couple of years with the Players Association about how they want everybody to have natural grass – and even some of the colder weather climates are talking about making sure that they have grass. And so you don't ever want to lose that. And, uh, and I'm sure that they're going to find a way to make that, that, make that happen. Seating capacity for Jaguars games, just under 62,000. It could be up above 71,000 for college football, Florida-Georgia game, uh, the Gator Bowl, any college football playoff games that could be down the pipeline as well. Of course, more than that for concerts, there's all these designs available on firstdowntownjacksonville.com and jaguars.com to show you the different ideas and iterations that could be in this multi-use space. And I mean, the outside of it is just just kind of cool looking, right? I mean, this this kind of almost mirrored sunglass look on the yeah. outside. That's yeah, cool. I'm kind of curious, does that... Does that provide more heat reflection? I think that's some of the uh, idea, right? I mean, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm thinking that that may be. It, but it definitely looks cool. It, uh, you know, look, uh, I'm all for it. You know, you go and you look at some of the stadiums that we get the opportunity to visit around the league, and, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, some of these new stadiums. I mean, from Minnesota's to the one in L.A. to Jerry's World in Dallas, which is even though it's been a few years since it's been built, it's still an amazing facility i mean everybody is getting it seems like the latest and greatest when it comes to facilities and you know this team has invested millions of dollars building their own training facility which is right outside the stadium and uh you know so uh, this team is, is definitely committed to this market and i'm looking forward to seeing the stadium come to, to come to real life that, that is the first part of this process, by the way. The opening of the Miller Electric Center in less than a month now uh, is the start of the football team obviously getting out of TIAA Bank Field. The next step is the office buildings by the Four Seasons. Uh, the business side, in theory, could go in there. And then all of a sudden the stadium is empty and ready to be renovated. And in time, this is that's step one of the process to get to what happened yesterday. Yeah, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of people, you know, that have been working incredibly hard at this. You know, Mark Lamping right there at the top for the Jaguars organization and, and Jod Khan as well. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this because, you know, they've done an amazing job of making sure that the stadium has, has stayed kind of up to date. And then I think this is the next step and it's a, it's a natural step and, and it's good that uh, I know that there was some conversation at some point that would it be a new stadium or would it be a, a remodeled stadium? And I know that the price tag comes down significantly with a remodel as compared to a new build, so that's a good thing. Well, I mean, I think it's remodeled basically in name. Um, it's basically a brand new stadium on the the supports is what it's going to feel like. Right. I mean, that's what it's going to be at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's going to feel like that anyway with the expanded concourses and everything. That it, It's not even close to what it is right now. Yeah, and so, awesome. and that, you know, the question pops up, and then, you know, what happens when that starts, you know? And, and you know, you kind of cross that bridge when you get to it, but there's options out there, and, and I think uh, there's probably some exciting options out there as well. 
Well, I'm sure we'll hear from Mark Lamping on some of those topics, and we certainly did yesterday. We'll replay some of that interview coming up. Hey, in the next couple weeks, though, they'll have 14 Huddle Up Community Huddle events over about a 10-day span throughout all the districts in Jacksonville. Well, you'll have a chance to come out. Mark Lamping will be at all of those in the coming weeks. So it starts on Monday. They'll be in Springfield Monday. June 13th, they'll be in uh, Mandarin, San Jose, and 295. The full list at jaguars.com, by the way. I'm not going to go through all 14 of these here, but um, some are during lunchtime, some are in, you know, 5 o'clock hour. So they kind of get some different time frames in there for people to be able to take off work or come early or come late, whatever you can make. And, so, and, and you don't have to register or anything. You just come, and you don't have to go to the one in your commute. You can go to the other one. You can go to any of these you want. They're wide open. Which one are you going to? I'm going to probably about 10 of them. Oh. They're gonna be, are you, uh, you going to be I'm the not. MC? I'm not. No. No. Okay. I'm just going to I'm gonna be there. You're going to be there. I just want to hear what's going on. All right. It's good. It's All exciting. Right. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, the huddles end, you know, at some point when this thing starts to, to get going. Oh, man. And by the way, yes, the uh, the new practice facility. We're getting close, man. I, I mean, these guys that are out there working their tails off are doing an amazing job. I mean, just every week there's been significant progress, especially over the last, you know, four and five, four or five weeks. And, and they've done a beautiful job with some of the landscaping and some of the entryway to it on you know this side that we can actually see when we come in and out of the stadium. I mean, just a credit to all the people that have been working at that facility and, and how much they've contributed. It, it's, it's truly amazing. And the people that are spearheading that, I mean, to be able to have that done as fast as they've gotten it done, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. Just a few weeks away, and the Jaguars, of course, are excited to take the field this fall, and we want you here for all the action. For as low as 57 bucks per game, you can join the ranks of the most dedicated fans and become a Jaguars season ticket member. Find your perfect seats at jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. Jaguars president Mark Lamping and HOK design principal Peter Broder explain the design of the stadium of the future. That's next on Jaguars Happy Hour. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Summer is around the corner, Jags fans, and we want you to keep cool as we gear up for the 23 season. Enter the Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes now for your chance to win a summer supply of Snickers Ice Cream and, for you and a guest, a meet and greet with our head coach and a VIP training camp experience. Five runner-up winners will receive an autographed football each. For your chance to win, visit jaguars.com slash sweepstakes. The Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes ends 11.59 p.m. Sunday June 25th. A solid plan. It's the first step to accomplishing any goal. There's no limit to what's possible when you have the right team by your side. So start building your legacy today. Take advantage of high yield saving solutions with money market, online savings, CDs, and more. Visit TIAABank.com today. It's time for a plan. TIAA Bank, member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Hey, Jags fans, Brian Sexton for DreamFinders Homes. In a complex housing market, do decisions on the biggest purchase of your life stress you out? At DreamFinders Homes, they can build the home of your dreams in one of their many communities in Northeast Florida. 
With a mortgage company in-house, they're here to assist you throughout the entire process. Choose from their wide range of single-family homes or townhomes from the 300,000s. DreamFinders Homes specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. Call 904-590-2545 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Honey, are you using the hot water? No. The water's cold again. How can we fix it? <coughs> Did you just quack like a duck? Yep. Duck Duck Rooter, your plumbing pros in Northeast Florida. For water heater installation and service, including tankless water heaters, gas, or electric, call for a quote today. When you're stuck, call the duck. 904-862-6769. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on 1010XL AM, jaguars.com, at Jaguars on Twitter, and Jaguars Facebook and YouTube as well. All over social media, J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, David Cho on the video, Joe Fortunato on the audio. Glad you're with us. The Stadium of the Future unveiled yesterday. Not just the stadium, but the area around the stadium, the neighborhood. Everything will be impacted. That's the idea, at least. All the renderings, designs, and more at first downtownjacksonville.com. That's the number one ST, downtownjacksonville.com, or jaguars.com. Either way, they're mm-hmm. both free websites. That's correct. Check them out. Uh, yesterday, I caught up with Jaguars President Mark Lamping and HOK Design Principal Peter Broder and discussed how we got to this point and what went into the design of the stadium of the future. So, Mark, it's been a long road to get to this point. How did we get here? Well, it's a big day for sure. You know, we, we first started the discussion, uh, the public dialogue regarding um, the need to deal with this, the, the, the stadium back in 2016. And three years ago, we began a formal process with the city of Jacksonville. And, um, you know, today marks the end of that three-year process with the unveiling of the design. It was a very extensive process. It began with a thorough evaluation of the existing stadium, uh, which led us to the conclusion that um, there was the possibility we could uh, meet meet our needs through a renovation. Uh, We then talked to our fans and other stakeholders, primary amongst them the University of Florida, University of Georgia, the Tax Slayer Bowl, got input from them in terms of what they would like to see in a stadium in the future. Uh, we then had a very extensive design competition. Uh, firms from across the, comp- uh, the, the country uh, presented their conceptual designs. And uh, last December, we selected uh, uh, HOK. And since then, we've been refining the design, uh, working on the, the constructability, working on pricing. And we were just very excited to be able to unveil today uh, you know, what the future could look like. So, Peter, obviously, the, some of the things that Mark just talked about probably made this project so appealing for HOK to, to try to jump in and get involved. What stood out the most? Absolutely. Uh, the potential for this project as a catalyst, not only for the surrounding development, for all of downtown Jacksonville, uh, was enormously exciting for us, really from the outset of the design. Uh, the design process was equally thorough, as Mark outlined, um, and we really prioritized um, fan comfort and fan experience, uh, first and foremost, throughout every decision made through the design process. Um, and that factors into some of the amenities that you see um, in the, the artwork that was unveiled today. Um, tremendously excited about that. And it really begins with that experience as shown here, uh, walking the promenade and entering through a new landscape and new garden ways that lead you to the concourse and to the front door of the building. Uh, the concourses themselves now significantly expanded as shown here, um, expanded to the point where we've now doubled, tripled, and in some areas quadrupled this, the width of those concourse spaces. Um, A lot of discussion and excitement, obviously, around the facade and the roof. Uh, That was designed in such a way, again, to maximize fan comfort, to reduce solar heat gain, um, to shield from inclement weather. And um, additionally, uh, it becomes a really signature and iconic element to the design as well. Um, It's seldom, I think, that renovations are discussed as an icon, and uh, this venue certainly has the opportunity to be just that an icon. Mark, to that point, uh, he was talking about the roof. I mean, that that was really the number one thing you heard from fans was the comfort in the stadium, the sun, the way it sets here in the afternoon in the fall. The east side of that stadium gets burned up no more with this design. Yeah, well, you know, we had said any solution does that, that does not bring shade on every seat 
uh, we'd be doing a disservice uh, to our fans. So, you know, the the concept that uh, HOK came up with, you know, we think is just brilliant because what it does is it is it is it reflects the heat, it provides the shade, but it doesn't do it in a way that it diminishes the views from inside the stadium looking out. So, what looks like a metal reflector around the stadium, you know, is actually a material that's very much like reflective sunglasses. It reflects when you're looking at it from the outside, but when you're inside, you can look look right through it and enjoy these tremendous vistas of the St. John's River of downtown and and all that Jacksonville has to offer. Sounds like a sponsorship idea to me, uh, Mark, uh, looking ahead. All right, so the flexibility of this space, guys. I mean, you mentioned some of the other stakeholders in the stadium and maybe some ideas down the road for other events that could come in here. How important were those discussions in the design phase of, you know, more seats, less seats, uh, different setups and everything? Certainly. It starts with the seats, uh, and it actually starts with the roof, too. Uh, maximizing the full usage of this venue in a multi-purpose fashion starts with a full roof canopy. And so that was central to the design decisions. Um, from a seating standpoint, definitely thinking about flexibility. Uh, for NFL uh, events, the ability to um, play to a home crowd of around 62,000 seats um, was first and foremost part of the design. But then the flexibility to expand for multi-purpose events for the Florida Georgia game. Um, we wanted to design the expansion seating in a way that was as seamless as possible. Um, and that, that certainly factors into creating a terrific fan experience for those Florida Georgia fans or uh, attendees of, of any um, of these expanded events, whether that's the Gator Bowl, the college football playoffs, um, international soccer. Uh, that was certainly factored into the design thinking too. Um, not just from a seating flexibility standpoint, but from a uh, from a character standpoint too, creating a truly international uh, stadium for soccer events. There's a lot of new stadiums that have come online the last few years around the NFL, Mark, but this one looks to stand out. I mean, this is a unique design and idea, and the functionality that could go with this thing is really fantastic. Well, we don't think we have to make many sacrifices by going with a renovation versus a new build and we get so many other positives i mean just think about the sustainability mm -hmm. you know we'll be using uh, so much fewer natural resources uh, to make this stadium of the future possible um, and it's significantly less less costly you know to to build the stadium that we uh, uh, released today to do that on a greenfield site someplace else here in jacksonville um, would cost about 2.4 billion dollars and uh, the cost of the renovation, obviously, significantly less than that. You know, we, we see some of the renderings outside the stadium as well, but how important is this stadium and this project to the, the city of Jacksonville and downtown Jacksonville in the future here, Mark? Well, I think it's critical. I mean, I think we're at a very important time in the history of Jacksonville. The city's on fire uh, on, on every measure. Uh, the Jaguars are in an ascending position. And, you know, the primary purpose is to um, have our downtown, like so many other downtowns across this country and uh, cities similar size of Jacksonville or smaller or larger, to have that downtown become a real economic engine that can generate the resources to help invest throughout the community, particularly in those, those underserved areas of, of Jacksonville. You know, what we hope to do uh, is try to replicate the impact of what is, what's been so positive with um, the growth of the Brooklyn La Villa area that's you know to the to the west of downtown and you can physically see how that investment in the Brooklyn area now is moving eastward towards towards downtown um, we think we can replicate that but we would do it on the east side of downtown and it means bringing uh, 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 bringing a new neighborhood where people have a chance to live where they have a chance to work uh, that serves as a great connector between the St. John's River to the sports complex, to the out east neighborhood, and beyond. And the stadium being an, an important part of that. Um, and it's not just, you know, securing the future uh, of the Jaguars. It's, it's protecting the, um, the very important uh, uh, Florida-Georgia game that has happened here every year and is, is something that is really important for all of us here in Jacksonville. Uh, trying to elevate the uh, the Gator Bowl so it could be a legitimate uh, candidate to uh, become part of an expanded college football uh, playoffs, to be able to attract other events, um, international soccer, uh, you know, we, we mentioned, but concerts and, and, and events that can make a big impact in this community 
And there isn't a, a new stadium or arena that's being built around the country that isn't being master planned, uh, you know, with an entertainment district as part of it. Because as these rights holders, people that, 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 that make the decision on where these events go, they want to make sure that their, that their fans, uh, that their customers have things to do before, during, and after these events. And an investment like this, even as far as the NFL is concerned, you know, puts us in a legitimate position to be able to compete for the NFL draft. And I think all of those are, are big things for the community, and you know, I think now is our time. That's Jaguars president Mark Lamping and HOK design principal Peter Broder, a conversation that ran yesterday. It's available on jaguars.com. Check out the full conversation there. Um, Logs, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's exciting, and uh, and and obviously, uh, two guys that uh, have put a lot of hard work in, and the, some of the design stuff that they come up with, you're just like, wow, how did they think of that? You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? you know, because I mean, if you go back to a couple years ago, some of the renderings of possibilities were kind of these um, uh, canvas kind of coverings over the stadium, and then all of a sudden, you come up to this reflective glass that you can't see in, but you can see out of. Yeah, that looks like a Essentially, uh, Tom Cruise's Ray Bans from Top Gun. I mean, that's that's cool, right? Like a cabling system to keep it all up yeah. and everything. That's yeah. pretty remarkable. It's pretty. Uh, I guess you could say it's it. It would definitely set it apart. I mean, if you have something of that nature, of you know, if that rendering comes to fruition, I mean, it would be truly a landmark achievement for for this city and and certainly a place for a lot of people to go wow that's our place right yeah no doubt about that and uh, hey, by the way go check out the community huddle schedule it's coming up starting monday the uh the first one will be in uh, string sports brewery springfield lunchtime 11 30 monday june 12th the final one june 22nd at the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens. That's also an 1131. One. There's a handful of them that are at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Check at, out the full schedule. On at the, the zoo? Website. At the zoo. Did you hear? Oh, what? yeah. We, we got some breaking news from the zoo today on got uh, a, social media. Got right? a baby jaguar that was born today. All right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to name it. Well, so last time this happened... Yeah. There was a naming contest. Tell the, the story. The Jaguars were involved, and yes, this happened. So this is 10 years ago. Gus Bradley's the head coach. Mm -hmm. They had some – there was some fan rally in the stadium. I forget for what. Well, something was going on. But part of this fan rally was the announcement of the new name of the Baby Jaguar that the contest had come through. And the name? So Gus Bradley was – tap to come out and <laughs> announce this name so gus being gus gets up there and brings his gus bradley energy with him and you know they pull the name out or whatever it is they give him the name he said the new name is con and like <laughs> like the crowd goes crazy and the, that was it <laughs> i wonder what the name of this one's gonna and be. and he called it he called the jaguars <laughs> the jaguars jaguars <laughs> Jigs. The Jigs. Yeah, the Jigs. Uh, that was 10 <laughs> years ago. So um, I wonder what the new name's going to be. I don't know, but um, I've got a couple guesses, like Sir Lawrence or <laughs> Trevor. I mean, is that would that not be fitting? I, that, probably a good guess. I mean, look, I mean, this is – You could uh, name him 16, right? Nah, I think Name that's him the number? I, I mean, know. you know, I mean – It's that's, like seven. That's, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I have no I idea. I kind of like Sir, Sir Lawrence. Kind of like that. You know, why not? We'll come back. We'll uh, think about it. We're, it's not we'll, very often. I mean, it's not very often that you have a Jaguar born in captivity. Well, I mean, it's apparently once a decade. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Gotta, go, gotta go check it out. So maybe I'll make the huddle one that's at the zoo. What's the date of that? It's June 22nd. I might make that one so I can go check out the new Jaguar. Or, the, the, or the new Jag. <laughs> We're back in a moment. <laughs> hey, imagine this. We're going to talk about football when we come back. That's going on as well. Jaguars assistant coaches met with the media yesterday. We'll get their thoughts on what's going on in, in a di few different position groups. And calling all Jags fans, elevate your game day experience with Vine 04 Napa Valley, the official wine club of the Jags. Sip on handcrafted Napa Valley wines and show your team pride with every pour. Visit vine04.com and sign up. You'll receive three or six premium Napa Valley wine bottles twice a year. Exclusive access to private events. 
complimentary tastings, and so much more. Join the Vinyl Four Club today and toast to the Jags' legacy with every sip. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. A solid plan. It's the first step to accomplishing any goal. There's no limit to what's possible when you have the right team by your side. So start building your legacy today with TIAA Bank's Yield Pledge Accounts, all of which deliver a yield in the top 5% of competitive accounts nationwide. Visit TIAABank.com today. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's time to play Fix That Plumbing Problem. What do you do if you have a leaky pipe? Contestant 1. Put a bucket under it? That's it. And maybe a towel? Contestant 2. That's right. Just call the duck. Clog drains, leaky pipes to full repipes. Just call the pros at Duck Duck Rooter. Commercial, residential, any plumbing issue. When you're stuck, call the duck. 904-862-6767. Hey, Jags Nation, it's Andre Sisco, safety of your Jacksonville Jaguars, here to talk to you about Lou Ray Peanut Company. Lou Ray is bringing something to the market that has never been done before, microwavable boiled peanuts. Whether you like salty or a peppery Cajun kick, they've got you covered. Now, thanks to them, y'all can enjoy boiled peanuts at the bank while you watch me and the rest of the team tear it up on the field. Can't make the game? No sweat. Find a bag at a store nearest to you by heading to lourayepeanut.com slash find us. Go nuts, go Jags, and as always... Duval. We serve up a lot of different things at Dailies, but there's one ingredient that goes in everything we make. That's quality. Whether it's a piled high breakfast biscuit, a sub, or tacos and quesadillas for the whole family, you get more delicious choices and quality all the way, all day. Quality meats, quality fixings, quality everything, right down to the quality person that makes it for you. That's what we know Jacksonville deserves. Quality made fresh. Dailies. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's start creating yours with the SUVs of the future, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. They all earned government five-star overall crash safety ratings by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration because the SUVs of the future aren't designed for a few. They're for everyone. Be future ready with Ford SUVs. Government five-star safety ratings are part of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's new car assessment program. For more information, visit NHTSA.gov. Summer is around the corner, Jags fans, and we want you to keep cool as we gear up for the 23 season. Enter the Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes now for your chance to win a summer supply of Snickers Ice Cream and, for you and a guest, a meet and greet with our head coach and a VIP training camp experience. Five runner-up winners will receive an autographed football each. For your chance to win, visit jaguars.com slash sweepstakes. The Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes ends 11.59 p.m. Sunday June 25th. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony. Jaguars today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't change anything for us. I mean, obviously, if anything, it's got to work even harder. I mean, it doesn't really change anything for us. Regardless of the expectations, the game is, is played on Sunday. You got to go out there and play the game, and regardless of if people think you're going to win, think you're going to lose, doesn't really matter. So, um, and that's the mindset we had last year, being pretty much the underdog in every game, and we got to carry that over this year too. We still have to have that chip on our shoulder and prepare the same way. You know, this, we didn't, we still didn't get to where we wanted to last year, so we have a lot more work to do. That's the quarterback, and maybe the new name of the new Jaguar at the zoo, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. I'm J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagavin. We heard from Mark Lamping earlier, Jaguars president, the stadium of the future design, at least initially, unveiled, and that process is moving forward. But, you know, that comment about uh, being the hunted now instead of the hunter, there's a lot of people, they're not going to sneak up on anybody, but uh, according to the quarterback there, it doesn't really change a whole lot of your preparation. Maybe the mindset on... Uh, going into a game could be a little different. Well, it, I think the one thing is that you, you want to take the natural steps of becoming one of those teams that that 
is a contender year in and year out. That it doesn't matter, right? You're just there. And you don't want to have the mindset, well, you know, this year we need to be different because we're the hunter or the hunted. I mean, you don't have to – you take the mindset is that, look, we're a good football team, we know it, but we still have to prove it and we still have to put in the hard work. And you got to have the confidence and a little bit of that swagger once you get on the field. And that's, I think, important. But you still have to be able to put in the hard work. And that's the hard part. That's why you see a lot of teams that have these ebbs and flows from season to season. But then when you have true greatness, it's a consistency that's there year in and year out because the expectation of being a contender is there every year. You know, the Patriots, the Steelers for so many years. I mean, the teams that year in and year out. I mean, right now, the Philadelphia Eagles have worked their way into that mindset. The San Francisco 49ers are a quarterback away from being in that conversation year in and year out. So that's where you want to be. And right now, you're you're sitting there poised uh, with a great quarterback, young quarterback that should be able to take even – more steps to becoming one of the elite quarterbacks in the league, and that's exciting because if you have that player, that position, you have a chance. Jaguars assistant coaches speaking yesterday. There were two windows, 45-minute roundtable sessions with the offensive staff, then or defensive staff first, then the offensive staff second. Let's start on defense yesterday. Outside linebackers coach Bill Shuey discussing Josh Allen – and turning those many pressures into sacks. Josh is working, and he understands there's a little bit of a gap to close right there between the pressures and the sacks, but the pressures are important. He does a good job there. He's, he's, he does a good job in the run game. You know, he sets great edges in the run game. He plays with great effort. He's all over the field. You know, to your point, yeah, he, he does a lot for the team outside of just the sack numbers, but I, I think at the end of the day, you know, he'll tell you, and I'll tell you the same thing. we got to get more sack production. Josh Allen, one of two players who has not been in attendance for the voluntary offseason program. Um, the mandatory part is at least on the schedule for next week. We'll see if he comes to town for it. And, hey, it's year five for him. And he was great down the stretch log. So the well, last five weeks of the season were fantastic. He was the right place, right time, made some big plays and big moments. How does he expand that to 17 games? Well, I mean, consistency and production. I mean, that's that's really what Josh needs to achieve. And, and sometimes things get in the way of that, whether it be the circumstances around you that are, are out of your control. Uh, for example, you know, the quality of your team overall. And then some of that can be physically you get beat up. You know, you might have some injuries that you're contending with. But, you know, I think Bill is right and that the one thing you don't question with Josh is the player that comes to work each and every day and it comes to play each and every Sunday or Monday or Thursday or whatever day it's going to be. It hasn't been Monday in a long time. No, yes. I know, but you can actually say that now. <laughs> yeah, that's but, right. yeah. but you love Josh as a person. You love him as a leader. And he's on the last year of his deal, and so he is choosing not to participate, and that's okay, whatever it takes for him. And if he ends up having a highly productive year, then, you know, the, the team's going to have a decision to make, you know, and they've still got the ability to use a franchise tag and also the ability to sign him to a long-term contract. You know, but I, I think you, you just you don't ever rest with where you're at, I mean, as an organization. You always look to improve. And I think that's one of the reasons why they went out and they drafted another edge type of outside linebacker from Louisville. That uh, Yasir Abdullah. Yep. Yeah, and he's you know he's not a, a high pick, but he's certainly a, a high enough pick to where you expect that him he's going to come in and have some kind of an impact. And then also you have to exhaust all of the the opportunities that are out there in the free free agent market and. What is it, uh, Daniel Hunter? Yeah, Daniel Hunter is, is reportedly available. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because the Vikings are going through some restructuring. They're trying. They got a new GM. They're trying to figure out. So the running back has been is apparently going to be cut tomorrow. They're trying to get Dalvin a trade Cook. for him. Uh, that's just a couple of changes already, and apparently Daniel Hunter is on the market as well. And look, he's a he's a marvelous player, and, and right now I think his cap number is right around a little, I think five and a half million, something like that. Um. I mean, look, you, you look at everything. And Hunter's, I mean, an unbelievable athlete. I mean, this guy's got some freakish qualities. So uh, do you look at that? Absolutely. 
I mean, because right now you 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 don't have, you know, you're you're talking about taking Trayvon Walker, maybe moving him inside and getting some snaps as an inside pass rusher. Okay, well, if that's the case, then who's going to be rushing on the other side on the outside? I mean, well, I mean, you know, Hunter would look good on the other side. Well, sure, he would. You know, I mean, he's a good football player, and like I said, he's got freakish athletic ability, and he's been productive uh, in his career. Uh, that's something that you definitely take a look at. You got to take a look at everything. I mean, it's a football team. Just like when they, when they made the change at kicker, they said, "Look, even if it's getting better by one percent, you still have to exhaust every possible avenue to commit to make your team better." And I think that Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson and the coaching staff, I'm sure, will be looking at all available options, and that may be one of them. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on 1010XL AM and Jaguars.com. JP Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman. Let's flip to the offense. Trevor Lawrence. Back in year two last season, continued his growth on the field, but on the sideline as well, according to quarterbacks coach Mike McCoy. His voice carries a lot of weight. When he speaks up, whether it's in practice, whether it's in a meeting, whether it's on game day, everybody listens. And so it's important for him to understand that, you know, as he's, you know, um, spent plenty of time in here, he knows every little detail now of the system. To where if it's not right, you got to fix it. Because you only have so much time on game day. So if they're not doing, whether it's in the huddle, whether it's the sideline, there's only so much time in between series. You got to communicate and tell. You know, talk to Christian about, hey, the next time we run this route, hey, if you do, the, I got to make sure I understand you're going to dive down on this technique so we are on the same page, so we don't miss that. And I think if you if you watched him from the first week in Washington to the very last game in Kansas City, you saw him at the end of the year come right off the side, or right off the field go to whoever he wanted to talk to, whether it was a Phil, the offensive line coach, whether it was an offensive lineman, mm-hmm. any position, or go to Doug and say, Coach, maybe let's get back to this. I just, I, I miss that. Yeah. And that's part of, you know, becoming a pro. That's Mike McCoy, Jaguars quarterbacks coach. And, uh, yeah, it just it builds over time. Your, your confidence and ability to go to anybody on this roster and, and say what you need to say. I think what's impressive to kind of take a little different angle here from that interview is that obviously your angle is Trevor and my angle here is Mike McCoy. I mean, if you look at the staff that Doug Peterson has put together <laughs> right, and some of the offensive minds that he has, I mean, every week during the regular season, you sit there and you watch some of the plays that they come up with and you go, wow, that's great. You know, of uh, some of the fast motions in and he come back and, and buzz to the out. I mean, some of those things that they were doing was just, I mean, next level. And and when you're an offensive coach and you can come up with creative plays that week in and week out, you're sitting there making people go, wow, it's impressive. And Mike McCoy is an excellent coach, and I think it was a big part of Trevor's development and getting over that hurdle last year. I mean, you got Mike McCoy and Press Taylor and Doug Peterson. I mean, I mean, even their offensive line coach, Phil Rauscher, was the one who designed some of those short yardage plays that they had last year that paid dividends for this football team. That's right. I mean, they get so many different contributions from from the staff. And I think that the challenge, I think, this year for this football team is that can the defensive staff kind of match some of that and get that defensive side of the ball to take a big step forward from a productivity standpoint, and also schematically. I think there's a lot of things that they can do defensively this year to get better as a staff. Let's finish up with the wide receivers and Coach Chad Hall. Inter- and, and he, and, and he inherits, easy for me to say, a <laughs> deep wide receiver room. Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, of course, both over 1,000 yards last season. Calvin Ridley's in the mix now. Hall explained yesterday what he's most excited about. One of the best things about coaching is the relationships you create. So uh, the guys in the room are great. They, um, you know, they, if, if you got guys who work hard and are unselfish and don't care about anything but winning and helping each other, I mean, those are the guys and the guys you want to be around. And then learning their stories and uh, figuring out where they came from and building those relationships, becoming vulnerable with each other, because then when bullets are flying, anything can be said, no one takes it personally. It's just, hey, we're trying to win this game. So I think that's what the offseason's all about, especially when you have new guys, or I'm the only new, you know, I'm the new one coming in. Just creating those relationships takes time. 
Chad seems like a really chill, kind of laid back kind of bro. And, and it's nice uh, hearing him uh, really for the first time in front of the media in Jacksonville. He was with the Jaguars in 2014 in the offseason for like 10 days. And that was the end of his career as a player. And then as coach in the NFL with the Bills for a couple, uh, number of years and now with the Jags. So he was an offensive assistant for two years in Buffalo, then a wide receivers coach uh, for four years and now with the Jags. And what a room to come into, right? What a situation for Chad Hall. Well, he did a great job with Diggs in Buffalo. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people think, well, you know, he's a superstar. He didn't need coaching. Oh, no. I mean, look, you still coach some of the ex- some of the players that you have, even if they're excellent players. But – you know, he, he, I think, has said it exactly right in that when you have a room that's unselfish, it's just easy to handle a room like that and to coach a room like that. And we know last year from watching, and you saw me point it out many times on film about how willing Christian Kirk and Zay Jones were to block that showed how unselfish they were and how committed to the team that they were. And now you're adding Calvin Ridley, and Calvin's got to have that same mindset. And I think he will. He's going to want to make sure that he fits. But with the addition of Calvin Ridley, what I'm excited about, too, is that I think it's going to make Christian Kirk even more comfortable. Because last year I think they were asking some different things out of Christian Kirk that took him a little bit out of his comfort zone because where is he home at? Oh, he's in the slot. In the slot. Absolutely. All day long. Just and if you look at the numbers, I mean, from uh, you know, Pro Football Focus had numerous stats last year that he was one of the most highly productive receivers from the slot. And that's where he needs to be to be at home. And so with Calvin Ridley, who's an excellent player on his own right, uh, being on the football field, it's going to allow – Christian Kirk to be able to be in that slot. And so it's, it's going to be exciting, JP, to watch how all of these weapons are going to be kind of melded together to become one because they got a lot of weapons. A lot. I mean, they drafted – I mean, we're talking skill position weapons now. I mean, they drafted two in the first three rounds, you know, tight end, and running back. How are they going to fit in with the uh, existing tight ends and running back room? I mean, it's, it's going to be fun. There's only one football, though. That's okay. And I, and I, and I also think that that's, that's where Trevor is going to be, I think, really good because he's a strong leader and he's a natural leader. And that now that he's had success, okay, now he gets to grow not only as a player, but he also gets to grow as a leader. And I think he's been a natural leader from the very beginning. But now there's a, a comfort level in being that. And so when you have a, somebody who's a very strong leader at that position – Anything that can kind of pop up when that, hey, I'm not getting the ball enough, those things can get squelched a little bit with a strong leader in front of the huddle. Whether you want to entertain your closest friends, build your network, or treat your employees to a memorable game day experience, there are premium seating options at the bank that fit every need. And for more information about single game suites, club seats, spa cabanas, and more, call 904-633-2000 and select option three. When we return, a Pro Bowl running back is reportedly getting cut. We go around the league on Jaguars Happy Hour. A solid plan. It's the first step to accomplishing any goal. There's no limit to what's possible when you have the right team by your side. So start building your legacy today. Take advantage of high-yield saving solutions with Money Market, online savings, CDs, and more. Visit TIAABank.com today. It's time for a plan. TIAA Bank, member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Jags fans, Brian Sexton for DreamFinders Homes. In a complex housing market, do decisions on the biggest purchase of your life stress you out? At DreamFinders Homes, they can build the home of your dreams in one of their many communities in Northeast Florida. With a mortgage company in-house, they're here to assist you throughout the entire process. Choose from their wide range of single-family homes or townhomes from the 300,000s. DreamFinders Homes specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. Call 904-590-2545 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series. America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. 
based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. It's time to play Septic Tank Solutions. Question one. How often should you get your septic tank pump? Contestant one. Uh, when it starts running over in the yard? Uh, no, that's a little late. Contestant two. Mm, mm. That's right, Duck. At least every three years. For septic pump outs, inspections, to new septic tank and drain field installations, call Northeast Florida's only master septic contractor. When you're stuck, call the Duck. Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. Offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit theamaramedspa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. Summer is around the corner, Jags fans, and we want you to keep cool as we gear up for the 23 season. Enter the Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes now for your chance to win a summer supply of Snickers Ice Cream and, for you and a guest, a meet and greet with our head coach and a VIP training camp experience. Five runner-up winners will receive an autographed football each. For your chance to win, visit jaguars.com slash sweepstakes. The Snickers Ice Cream Chill All Summer Sweepstakes ends 11.59 p.m. Sunday, June 25th. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. If you're watching us on Jaguars.com or Jaguars social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, it's a live look at the Miller Electric Center open for business. Oh, gosh. Uh, we're, we're inside a month. June 30th is the official day the Jaguars get the keys, so July 1st they can start moving in. You know what I like, too? Up in those bleachers, up in the roof, yes. they've got these big, giant fans. They do. Just cooling that area. I can, love it. I can see that uh, that might be a good spot for me. Shade fans. Shade the whole thing. fan. For training camp, they'll be right <laughs> there on those two fields outside. The football offices will be in, inside the building on the right. Of course, the indoor facility on the far side is a part of this massive complex that will be open for business in July. Mm-hmm. And training camp will be right there. Reminds me of the, the Tom Coughlin days when they used to have the penalty box for the media. And they had they <laughs> literally drew a, a white line and made a box. And you had to stay in that box. So when when I stopped playing and became a part of the Jaguars broadcasting stuff, I had to be in the penalty box. And so I used to intentionally stand outside of that box just so that he would come over and say something. (laughs) Just so you could get a bite from him. Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's how it worked. It worked every time probably. Was, you know, it, it always, he, he doesn't he, miss a oh, thing. No, no, no. He, didn't miss, he did not miss a thing. Old Hawkeye Coughlin. Oh, yeah. yeah he's the best. So uh, we're looking forward to that. That's coming up. That's the first step, of course, towards the Stadium of the Future is getting the team in there. And, hey, there's no better time to be a Daily Place Blue member than right now. You can get your 2023 premium seat membership or individual luxury experience today and enjoy guaranteed seats in the best locations Email ticketing at boldevents.com or call 904-633-2000. Great schedule of shows coming up. Uh, Late June, June 22nd, Tedeschi Trucks Band. Today, our friend Derek Trucks celebrating his 44th birthday. So happy happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, that's cool. Happy birthday to him. That's uh, going to be a great show. Get tickets for it. Uh, There Are Are you going? I'll be there. Did uh, did you get me a ticket yet? Yeah, you want to go? I think I want to go. Come on. Yeah. Do you got uh, the Baselli couch reserved yet? I don't. Uh, Do we got to call Bo? He may or may not answer these days. You never know with him. <laughs> He's kind of a big deal. We'll see if we can get the Baselli couch. That might that be concert. a fun evening. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is Jaguars happy hour. Let's go around the NFL. The Vikings apparently are set to release Pro Bowl running back Dalvin Cook. They're expected to release him Friday, according to NFL Network reporter Tom Pelissero. Could be a last-minute trade, though, of course, between now and then. He was due a $10.4 million base salary in 23. He's 27 years old. They'll save $9 million off the cap this season if they cut him. And he's coming off four straight seasons over 1,100 yards and four consecutive Pro Bowls. And you're letting him go. 
See ya. <laughs> what are you doing? How about that? Well, salary cap. They got to no, trim mean, the cap. No, I mean, I, I get it. But, I mean, he's still a good football player. And, look, I mean, you have to pay good football players. And the unfortunate thing is the timing of this for Dalvin Cook. Okay, a lot of teams have already committed percentages of their salary cap for free agents, and now he's going to end up being a free agent kind of late in the game and doesn't really have any way to kind of get that money back, so to speak, maybe. Right. And that that's that's tough. I mean, that's, that's why you see players, when they get to the end like where he's at, that they say, wait a minute, I need to have my contract extended because it forces the hand of the team to either put up or shut up, and then allows the player to get to the market while there's still still money available. That's a tough spot for him to be in. NFL teams are adjusting off-season program schedules late in the week due to the air quality in some northeastern U.S. states. The Giants canceled Thursday's OTA session, not even worried about going inside. The Ravens, Jets, Eagles, and Commanders all moved their Thursday practice inside. Wildfires in Canada and CBS uh, reported Thursday logs that the air quality index in New York City hit a high of 484. The scale is zero to 500. That would have made it the worst air quality of any major city in the world. Yes. Yeah, similar to what uh, we experienced. Uh, I guess it was the uh, the Okefenokee fire a few years I back. I remember we that. Were getting some of that smoke. Yes. And um, you know, I hope that. Uh, you know, there's no lives lost up there in Canada, but uh, could be good for American producers of wood products. <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins will visit. So well, it's all about it. consider the the source. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins will visit with the Tennessee Titans. His first free agent visit. He's flying to Tennessee Sunday. The Cardinals released him in late May after failing to find a worthy trade offer. The receivers right now for the Titans: Traylon Burks, Kyle Phillips. And Nick Westbrook Akine. So this would be uh, a step up, I think, if he were to show up in Tennessee, right? Well, I mean, could be. You know, the, the question is, is can they get him the ball? Right? <laughs> right. Okay. Hey. Uh, and uh, and what's the quarterback situation going to be in Tennessee? Long term, great question. You know, and uh, – the reality is, is that that's not really a pass-first offense. Uh, no. Okay? Not close. So is that what he's looking for? Like, I, I think he's a marvelous player, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm talking specifically about him. Mean, he's a good football player. That guy can – I mean, he's got great catch radius. He's got uh, great routes. Uh, some of the, uh, the battles that him and Jalen Ramsey had years ago were epic and – it was worth the price of admission just to watch that. He slowed down a little bit. He's a possession receiver now. And so the question becomes, where's the sweet spot from a number standpoint for a guy who's, I mean, still a great receiver, but the big play potential has eroded somewhat? We'll find out. The off-season programs are winding down. We're a week away from the end of the off-season program and the start of the dead period. We'll have one more show, Logs, And on then Thursday. we hit the dead period. And we are dead. We're dead. Dead as can yeah, be. We're going to take a little break? Yes. All right. I am. I don't know about you. You can come do a show if you want. No. I'm, no, I'll take a break. I'm not going to be here. I'll take a break. Are you going back to Alabama? Yeah, I'll go up there for a little bit. You're going to hang out with Nick? Talk ball? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. None of that. Uh, I'm sure you're going to end up in the woods at some point. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that. I'm doing good. We'll dig into that next week on it's, our final uh, program. It's, it's summertime, JP. It's coming quick. The next time uh, after next week we do this show, it might be across the street. And might have a name for the new baby jaguar. <laughs> we, we might. You call, I guess you got to call it a kitten. Is that what you call it, baby jaguar? Or is I it mean, a cub? Is it a cub or is it a kitten? It depends on the animal. It's a cat, right? right? In theory, yes. So, I mean, but you don't call a lion a kitten, right? You call it a cub. That's also a cat. But is a jaguar a cub or a kitten? I haven't met many baby jaguars. I don't know how to, you know, address either, them. Either have I. But, so I One think way I, to do that is go to the zoo huddle up. On June twenty second, we can ask that question there as well as we can ask questions of Mark. That's Lamping. one question Mark Lamping might not be able to answer. <laughs>
He can answer all the rest for you about the stadium of the future. We're told it's a cup. It's a cup. I like kidding. Good talk, Logs. But I'll stick with a cup. That's too. Jeff Logovan. Our thanks to David Cho, Joe Fortunato. I'm J.P. Shadrick. We learned a lot today on Jaguars Happy Hour.